Hey everyone, it's Katie and Mike. Say hi, Mike. Hi, everybody. Uh, we are back for Agent Carter Reviews for Season 2. Uh, you, as you probably know if you watched the show in the last week or so, uh, that it has indeed been going to double episodes now, and I believe they're going to do that for the rest of the season. So our general idea is to just do them by the night that we that they were both on. So Instead of doing... This one episode will cover two episodes of Agent Carter. Exactly. Um, we're actually, if you didn't know, we were a little bit behind, but we're trying to catch up. Yeah, I was uh, sick. So we... I'm sorry. Good. And um, then we just, it took us so long to get this up, and we were already a little behind on the last, on the week before it. So for this one, we both only watched the episodes in the last few days. But we're here to talk about them because, wow, things are really picking up on this show. Yes, things have greatly. Um, greatly. Even though it does feel very much like they're still trying to, um, what's the word? Like they're still doing little. This is the crazy thing that's happening this week, sort of thing. And in this one, you know, last time it was like a, it was basically a heist. This time it's like a spy thing. Which is a slightly different flavor of, like, adventure. But, uh, as you recall... So, we have the two episodes. We should get to that first. We have two episodes uh, to go over. Uh, what were they called again, hun? Um, the... Ooh, I forget what the first one is called, but the second one, I believe, is Monsters. Oh, you know what? It's Life of the Party is the first one, and Monsters is the second. So, so life, yep, of the party life of the party is this, they come up with this plan where they have to get a little bit of Whitney Frost's blood because her, or at least antimatter, it's zero matter, zero matter. They have to get that zero um, matter. in order to help Dr. Wilkes, who is just barely hanging on to, um, to being part of, like, I forget how they're saying, but basically he keeps phasing in and out of existence, which is, you know, not a good thing. So they have to gather some of this zero matter from, uh, from Whitney Frost, but there's some problems. Uh, one, that Pe both Peggy and, um, and Souza are well known to Whitney Frost, so she would see them coming a mile away. But also the fact that the episode just before, Peggy had gotten impaled and barely, and barely survived dying. And we talked about it at length, just how ridiculous that wound is. But I at least appreciate the fact that she's not going back on a mission right after, even if there's still like no way in which like in which she would be able to move around. Period. This is very much. This is very much. Yeah, she's on desks. This is exactly, about as but much it's also like a very comic book wound. Because again, like not only did she did she get impaled and just that just happened to miss all of her organs, but she also like smacked her head really bad to the point where I still say that she probably would have had major like a major head wound in any other show, and instead she's walking around. So, um, but in any case, they're at least acknowledging no, 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 she'd be injured. She can't. She can't do it. So they decide. Well, who can we can't try? Rose is out of the is out of town conveniently, and we can't conveniently, and we can't trust anyone conveniently in the office because we don't know who's who's uh, working for the bad guys because already some of their higher ups are being really shady. Uh, so and we don't want to put any civilians in the field, even though they still put Jarvis in because apparently Jarvis is just like he has enough do he has enough field experience at this point. So they decide the only person that could possibly get the job done that Whitney Frost doesn't know that they can definitely trust to not be working for the government or for you know like the shady part of the government is uh, Dottie, who is in jail right now, or at least not jail, but like secret secret prison? I don't know what, what you would call it. Prom book prison, where it's, all, where Comic it's book prison. actually a facility that's underneath an, a closed clothing store of all places. So, they break her out, and it's 
every time Dottie and Peggy get to have interaction is really fun. So all like everything with them was a real treat. Would you agree? Yes, because they have really great conversations. It's with hard each other. not to think just... that Dottie has some really messed up but genuine feelings for Peggy. Like there's there's clearly something like she's she yeah. feels very strongly about Peggy Carter. So when Peggy Carter comes in, her face just lights up. She's just so excited. <laughs> Maybe it's because she does see Peggy as this challenge. That is true, and, and I think that I think also Dottie is so messed up <clears throat> that that. It, do, it makes sense for her to have affection come out in, like, through this very ad adversarial relationship. Um, where she would probably murder Peggy whenever, you know what I mean? Um, it's, it's similar, I don't want to make this distinction, but it does come to mind that it is similar to, like, how the Joker genuinely likes Batman, even though he's always trying to murder him. Like, there's some part of him that is just really glad that Batman exists for him to, to tangle with, you know? Uh, but yeah, so they break her out, mm -hmm. and they put a, a diamond necklace on her that is booby-trapped, so that if she tries to take it off, or tries anything shady, they could always flip the switch and it would kill her um so they have the a very fast acting poison a very fast acting and poison. um so uh, uh they also have a tracking device on her and they send her in with jarvis uh the whole episode is really entertaining there's a lot there's a lot going on and considering that peggy doesn't get to do a lot of it the fact that they still kept it really engaging is fun uh, and yes. there's, uh, and Peggy gets to have yeah, some nice that happened. With um, so, so apparently the the fiance is just gone. Like they broke it off. Um, and I do like the fact that immediately Peggy goes into friend mode, and it's like, how? No, that you are. Who does she think she is that she could say no to you? You are a perfect candidate for husband. Ness. I don't think she says like that. But she's very much like, I'll talk to her and explain to her how great you are. And he's like, no, that would be the worst idea ever. <laughs> and there's a whole, like, there's a whole gag where she, she asks why and he finally says, because she thinks that I'm in love with you. And Jarvis, who has his earpiece in, hears all of it. And his responses are, like, his physical and facial responses are amazing. <laughs> It's it's the perfect, like, what do I do? Oh my god, I'm hearing this, and I can't respond, because if I respond, then they'll know, they'll hear me, but I don't know what to do. Uh, and then everything goes to hell after that, because at that point, um, Dottie had been found out by, um, by Red from that 70s show, and, uh... And so, and then she gets captured. I'm trying to think if there's anything in between there. Um, there's a really good scene because they see Thompson. Yeah, they, they see Thompson's Thompson there. The... And immediately Dottie's like, can I kill him? I'm allowed to kill him, right? Like he's clearly, he's clearly back. We can kill him now, right? Because I really want to kill him. And like, a, you know, a tutting parent, Peggy has to say over the mic, no, you, don't, you are not going to kill him. You don't get to kill anybody. No, stop it. Uh, but no, there's that great scene with Jarvis and and Thompson that I that I thought was handled really well, didn't you? Yes, because Jarvis gets to be a little bit, um, just a little. Yeah, bit and of he a does. It, it's fun because in he does it without without actually giving away anything like he doesn't say anything incriminating you know thompson's very suspicious already he's like it's clear you clearly were sent here by carter she's clearly has her hands in something what are you doing and then uh jarvis essentially says no but i would say this to you that you need to be careful because you were getting wrapped up in and like 
the way he, I forget what he says exactly, but he but he has some really strong, accurate words to say to Thompson about how how uh, his behavior and being kind of cowardice because he's and he's uh, surrounded by snakes. But um, yeah, I thought that that was done really well. It's interesting where they're going with Thompson because. I think they could easily have him, he has enough deniability at this point um, that as long as once it, once he knows for sure that something bad's going down, he actually chooses to do the right thing, they might end up going that way where he decide. you know, he's very suspicious at this point. It's pretty clear that he, he's not completely in the dark about what's going on, but there's still enough deniability on his part. You know what I mean? Like, he's yeah, still... He's that. just at the point where if anything else happens... He's... He thought that the guy was going to be a senator and he was going to be working with the senator and, you know, he, he has dreams yeah, of and... grandeur, sort of like. And he's thinking it in a... You know, helping... Yeah, the exactly. The country. Well, sort yeah. Of way. Rather than helping this shady, go, you know, I don't think his. I mean, I don't think his his intentions industry. are nearly that pure, even to himself. I think he's thinking of it as as playing the game, but I don't think he's thinking of it as as um, he's an accessory to something extremely illegal and and mutinous, you know, which. Yeah, yeah but it's not to the point where, himself. like, I don't think he knows anything about about what Whitney Frost is doing. When he gets to that point, I think it's going to be one of those things where he has to decide whether he's in too deep and he has to keep going or he's going to do the right thing. I'm, I don't know either way. I feel like I feel like honestly, they could set him up for a, a good fall that would, because I feel like if they make him a good guy after all. It's almost the weaker, the weaker ending, you know, for him to be, for him to be like fairly yeah. sleazy even now, but then decide to go back and like, and be okay, even though he, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I've been saying from the beginning of this one that I think they're setting him up for a fall, even though I totally thought that he was going to get betrayed and like completely like you know just like oh you thought that had meaning well no not really not at all I was just using you I really thought that's how they were going to play him and then he would end up with nothing but um I'm kind of thinking he's just going to sort of get squirreled like he's he's going to end up seeing that he's not yeah I'm kind of I'm kind of in between because at the well we'll get to the second episode coming up but with the first, this first episode, I still feel like he's still in that middle ground where he could easily... Well, wait, maybe it was the second... Maybe it was the first episode where he goes to Peggy. Do you remember? It's hard for me to, uh... to remember because it, it was... Like, I watched the episodes, you know, back to back, like a lot of people did. But, um... Oh, whatever. So, yeah, I'm interested in what, Tom, in what they're doing with Thompson. Um, besides that, I'm trying to think what else happened specifically in the first episode. I mean, Jarvis was great. He, I like him stepping up to the plate as far as a action guy, you know? He continues to just be very yeah. delightful. And, uh, yeah, it, it's... He is the Yeah, he's a spy. bit of a bumbling spy, and he he has these new glasses that are the new uh I think they were just they're supposed to, I forget if they were is it listening? Listening. But yeah, devices. he's like, Oh, I have I have these new the glasses. Microphone. I think they're rather fetching. He says to Thompson. Um, besides that, yeah, really the greatness of that episode goes to Dottie because Dottie's so good in it. That actress just yes. like knocks it out of the park. I'm, I'm looking up her, what her name is because I know, like, she did such a good job last... Uh, it's Bridget Reagan. 
she did such a good job last season and this season it's really nice to see her play that the like unhinged part of Dottie more uh and there's a lot just a lot going for that for that character as far as a foil for Peggy especially especially in relationship to like to Whitney Frost as another as another foil for her you know what I mean that's what I like about the show. There are a lot of women characters on this show, and they a lot of them have really interesting nuances to them, like really weird, especially with the with the more villainous female characters. They have a lot of weird ticks and stuff that I I, I like that they're kind of digging into that. Uh, and all right, and then the other person, the other great uh, person in that episode was Whitney Frost when she finally finally gets rid of her husband yeah um i kind of oh yeah no i saw from the coming. episode before when he called when he secretly called while she was asleep i was like oh yeah well oh, really? i saw because i I've, yeah I that was one of the that. last scenes from that episode was she she was fall she had fallen asleep and he had called and he was like I need an emergency meeting I know that's not how this is done but we need to talk and that's what was setting up that meeting that's why he said oh we're we're me- having a meeting together I was like oh I know how this is gonna go down and it's so great because so Whitney Frost comes into the comes into this meeting after by the way like carefully trying to hide her ever growing. Uh, like scar, like black scar thing on her face, which is such a great. I love that that uh, detail of her character. It's so cool. But uh, so she goes in and she's wearing the you know she's wearing this big hat to hide to hide that long thing, and she starts. She has this big presentation to the men on the board, which she's never seen before because she doesn't get to be in it. And so she feels, you can tell that she feels like this is the next step and they're going to take me seriously. She shows them how she can, uh, how she can eat the rat with her hands, basically like just take, turn it into zero matter and eat it. And she's so like radiant and proud of herself. And she thinks that they're, she thinks that they're going to like embrace her into their club of power. And then instead they put ropes around her neck. Uh, and you... Yeah, like that was going to work. Yeah, I know. I, I appreciate the fact that they didn't just, like, try to grab her because that was dumb. At least they had the idea of you can't touch her. But, um, and it was the husband's doing. And she ends up... It turns out she has the new power of being able to let the, the black uh, zero matter, like, move for her out of her crawl up to the guys and and kill them and when she realizes that it's her husband who did it she kills him well no first she kills like half the members of the board and then she kills she kills um her husband and then the last four on the board she's like okay well now i'm in charge you're gonna listen to me and now we're gonna do what i want to do so it was a great scene. It was so good. Um, and yeah, so that was really the episode. I know we jumped around quite a bit, but that was the, the crux of the episode is that Whitney and her and the guys that she that's working for her now are um, have captured Dottie and uh and at the same time, around the same time, uh, not Jarvis, um, Souza told Peggy that he was in love with her, and they, and they do get the antimat or the zero matter, so that's the one good thing. But now, but now Dottie's gone, and that's where that episode ends. And basically, that. Um... Uh, Whitney has taken control. Yeah, Whitney has taken control. Everything. And there's a whole there's a scene where um again Jack yeah you know what that scene with Jack and Peggy in the morning does happen. But Jack Thompson's uh gets told by that by the oh what is his name is it um 
I forget who played uh, Kurtwood Smith's character. Uh, Vernon Masters is his character's name, but he warns him about how you know you have a you have a weak link in your in your organization, and and Peggy Carter is going to make your name you know give you a bad reputation. You need to stop this, and um, and I think it was at that point too that it's highly implied that. Um, that one of the reasons why Jack won't dig up dirt on her is because she already knows that stuff about him from last season and his what his uh, record in the army really was. But it's also, I think, I think genuinely it's also that he's not that big of an asshole, <laughs> you know? I don't think, I don't yeah. know if he would do anything that dirty yet, but I think that there was enough push on him uh that he might end up doing it. But he ends up going to Peggy, and Peggy ends up resigning because he's telling her to go back to New York, and she's like, no, I'm not going to. And, yeah, again, it's a really good scene because it shows, like, Peggy doesn't get pushed around. She doesn't want herself to get pushed. You know what I mean? And when it's something important like this, she won't let herself get you know, get intimidated like that. Uh, Pushed around or, or you know, basically, you know, you're off the case. Yeah, exactly. You can't. So she, she turns in her badge. Uh, and life goes on because the show keeps up, is still going. So with that, um, we get into the second episode because I think, I think we're to that point. Can I talk to w about one sure, more point? Sure, one more episode? point. Um, I still kind of like the Dottie escape scene, where because uh, they have that little interrogation in the room. Oh beforehand. yeah, yeah. And then uh, Peggy tells her, um, "When you get outside, turn right." And so Dottie uses the magnetic things to unlock the door. Yeah. And then the guard is knocked out and the gun gone. And, you know, she's like, Peggy, you make everything less fun. Yeah. And and then uh, she gets out to the door and immediately starts pr sprinting left. And then turns into and the then, alley, yeah. And then... And then right there is Peggy and Sousa, knowing that she probably wouldn't go right, so she would go left. I have a feeling that maybe they had, like, someone else on the on right, right side. Yeah. But they're like, but since she's probably gonna go left, if she's trying to escape, we better have, like, our better people. Oh, the other thing I really liked about... I think it was... Was it... See, this is where I'm getting having trouble... It might have actually been the next episode, but I'm going to talk about it as if it's in this one, just in case. But when, um, oh, when uh, Vernon Masters, the FBI guy, or maybe there is the CIA, I forget, but he's like one of, he's the shady upper head guy, uh, played by, um, played by Red from that 70s show. But he goes to Souza and he has this fake case for him, but it's uh, for the plutonium that they had that they had uh, taken a few episodes ago. It's after Whitney takes control of the Oh, right. Console. Okay, so, all right, so we can talk about it in this. So we're in the second one, and one of the things that happens is that, yeah, he goes to Sosa and says, oh, your people should look into this. And it's just highly, all it is is a veiled, like, you need to give up Carter or else I'm going to have, like... Or else something bad could happen to, to you and and your office, uh, which kind of stinks. Uh, and then later on, Sosa gets beat up. Basically, it's a bad episode for Sosa. He has a lot of stuff. He's taking some bumps. Mm -hmm. But um, they're clearly starting to um, center in on our heroes. In, in several ways, and that's the way that they do it for Sosa's character, and I really like the acting uh, when he's in his office with um, uh, with Vernon Masters because he it's so obvious that he knows what's going on, but he still keeps a straight face. And, yeah, and it's, sh and it's uh, lit well, like it's a lot of shadows and stuff. I really like that scene, though. 
And, oh, and there's a whole thing where he starts, Master starts to do the whole spiel about, you know, him having to think about himself and playing the game. It's like almost the exact same one he gives Thompson, where he talks about how, you know, people love a hero, people love a story, people love a war hero, you could do good. And instead of like Thompson does, where Thompson kind of plays into it, uh, Sosa says, I'm not a hero, I'm just a guy doing my job. And then escorts him out, which is really good. So besides that, um, Wilkes is... I'm interested in seeing where Wilkes goes with it, because he is not having a good time right now. <laughs> He's Wait, building... You mean Sozo, right? No, Wilkes. You were just talking about Sozo, right? I know, but I'm, I, trans, I transferred over to... I transitioned. Okay. Maybe it was not a very good... Unless you had something else to say about Sosa. Um, no, but I kind of, like, by the... I have things to say for, like, by the end of the episode, but I'm not going to go about it at the okay. beginning of the episode. Okay, okay. So, Wilkes is having a rough time, though, and I, I find it interesting because there are a lot of ways it could go. He's obviously angry, for good reason, and he's feeling like... And Peggy is so focused at the beginning of this episode on getting Dottie back, which, to be fair, is understandable because she's Dottie's a murderer. Dottie's a big threat. Yeah, Dottie's a big threat. And she's responsible for her being loose. Exactly. And they, she knows a lot about them. But also the fact that, like, there there were there are a lot of reasons why I could see her, like, wanting to focus on that first. And Wilkes points out, I might not, like, I don't have the time. I don't have the time to wait around for for everyone else to decide that that it's okay or like that it's it's safe enough to start working on me again we need to do this now so they end up building that machine and actually making him stable enough but only in that space but it's still really cute that the first thing he does he holds he grabs uh peggy's hand when he realizes that he's solid again and then he pulls her in and kisses her and it's super cute. And, of course, Jarvis and Mrs. Jarvis are there. And they're both like, mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's a really cute moment. And considering that they have so much chemistry together, it was really nice to see them get to actually, like, physically interact again. Got anything to say, Mike? <sighs> I was happy to see uh, Mrs. Jarvis again. That's true. Why has... Well, and she was in the episode before, too. Yes. Just a little bit, but... A little bit, but it was still nice. She got a little bit more nice. this episode. Yeah, I don't... That's the one thing about the show was... And I think the first season did this a little bit with Angie, where where there would just be way too many episodes where we wouldn't see her. And I was like, but I like Angie. And with this one, it's like, but I like Mrs. Jarvis. I like Anna. I want to see more of Anna. Yeah, I'm actually kind of surprised that we... We've gone so far, and we haven't seen that cameo for Angie yet. Well, I've heard it's supposed to be some kind of flashback or, like, dream sequence. Mm. So, yeah, that's disappointing, right? A little bit, yeah. But, but I mean, in general, it's just kind of disappointing, though, that we haven't seen as much of Anna because we were told, oh, she's going to be in it this season, and she's only been in a few episodes, like, maybe half of them. And it's almost, you know, it's getting close to the end. So I would have liked to have seen more of her in general. But it was great to see what we did, because she's super cute. Um, in this episode in particular, she's nervous. I think she was last episode, but she's particularly nervous about them going after... Uh, going after um, uh, Dottie and, and Whitney Frost and everything. Because it's just going to be her and, or him and Peggy. And things are getting heated up and they clearly think it's a trap. So there's a lot with her where she's not being like, no, you can't do this. But she is very cautious about it. Very. Which I can, which I can kind of understand considering her husband is not really, you know. It's not as if her husband is is trained as a spy you know she's a butler 
who happens to have like picked up some and I think she even says she says to Wilkes because she she and Wilkes have a really cute scene where they both eat dinner together because they're spending time with each other and they have they have a sort of friendship going on and she says that when she I think she says this to Wilkes that when she was hearing her husband's adventures the year before they didn't seem like she she didn't he never went into detail he kind of she just kind of knew sort of what was going on so it's a way harder to see it in person and especially considering what peggy just you know the wound that peggy just had if she if she had that happen to her what's going to happen to jarvis Mm -hmm. uh but yeah they have a really cute scene and i and i like it quite a bit and then a nice dinner so they have a nice dinner and while meanwhile Peggy and Jarvis go to get Dottie um, and it goes terribly wrong because he brings out this machine that's like a what would you call it? like a sound it's like a I would call it like an, an well it looks like a leaf blower but it's supposed to be like some kind of like impact thing Not, yeah where it's like sound but also wind but it's supposed to like knock you out and he there's a sp- specific code for it and he kept trying to do it and he couldn't get it to work and then um it was so once they're captured he realizes when they're about to get out because they finally get they finally um slowly get out and get dotty and he realizes that he had the wrong password because there were a few the pa- the password that was the or the passcode that's the measurements for one actress he was using the other so instead of one that was happening right away he ended up sending the code for the one delayed. that w- was a delayed response and then suddenly you hear a and and everybody's fall falling down which In is the convenient hallway is a lot messed up yeah, um, and we get a good, we get more Peggy Dottie interaction. But what really was good is the Dottie stuff that came before Peggy got there. Which we're backing up a little bit, but one Dottie uh, gets tortured or gets like threatened by by uh, uh, Red from that seventy shows character, and Dottie is not like the amount Dottie has zero fucks to give during that entire scene and it's amazing he's trying so hard to scare her and 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 talk about how he's tortured like a you know a nazi holocaust doctor's wife who something something like he gives this big spiel about it and how like he tortured her so he can torture Dottie. and Dottie's just like i pulled out my own teeth I pulled out my own fingernails. I pulled out my own hair. I have a high tolerance for pain. You aren't going to break me. It's so enjoyable to watch to watch Bridget Reagan's uh, just play this character because she's so unnerving, mm-hmm. you know. Gosh, I love her so much. Like, and then he gives her the true serum, and she just goes, "Ah, mother's milk." It is like how me- she's so messed up, and I really, I really appreciate how I like that she's so messed up, and yet, like, all of her weird tension stuff doesn't go towards like a male hero. It goes totally towards Peggy, because a lot of times, like, a weird unhinged character like that will become like hypersexual with a male character. Nope, not at all. She's Peggy's Harley um, Quinn. No, she's not even that because Harley, because Harley Quinn, like she has a thing for the Joker, but Peggy isn't the Joker. It's more like, I mean, in all honesty, it's more like she, like Peggy's Batman, and uh, and Dottie is a Catwoman. Good analogy. Except, like, the more weird, unhinged Catwoman, not, like, the the cat burglar one. So, but, so, um, um, so, uh, Batman, the Batman Returns, Returns yeah. one. Um, and it's not even the best analogy, but I'm going with it. 
So the other, but the other great thing about Dottie in this episode, which is seriously disturbing, um, but it's done really well, is Whitney Frost talking to her. Oh man, her, which is the exact opposite. Yeah. Of... Um, right. It turns out, so we had, you know, we just had Dottie say how all these torture techniques do not scare her. She's not a, she has a high tolerance for pain. She's not intimidated. And then all, all Wendy Frost has to do is use her powers, the, you know, the black powers on her and like nearly kill her. Like she has the black stuff gargling up her mouth and then, and then Whitney lets go and says, tell me what, tell me what I want to know. And yeah, Dottie just spills everything. Dottie, Dottie spills everything. It's so... And she she's broken, yeah. and she is, like, pain Terrified, and fear. yeah. And this is, like, what a brilliant way... Because we've already... First of all, it's not as if this is the only time we've ever seen Whitney Frost be intimidating. We've seen it. We've seen her powers being used. We've seen her be really intense and, and chilling. But now we have this point of reference... Where this is Do- this is the thing that breaks Dottie, and that's kind of like basically it's telling the audience that's how bad Whitney Frost is. That's how bad her powers are. It's highly it's just a really effective way of doing that. While already you know we already had a sense that they were really powerful. I mean Peggy has said herself that it hurt bad, but. We know that e- that e- her powers could even break, break, Dottie. Dottie. Yeah. And one of the things about it is, is that is this the first time she's used her powers and not ended up killing the person? Um, with Peggy too. Okay. And I think maybe. But, did, but, yeah. but Peggy got away, whereas Dottie had to stay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Peggy broke it off and got away. Yeah, I think I think every other time she's used it to kill. Yeah, she's used it so to kill. So this this is showing that she can use it for torture and keeping people. Yeah, I think and the... and also that like until the very last second she could she could pull back. Yeah. Um so anyway, so so that's all happened. Peggy goes to rescue Dottie, and then they realize that the that the trap was not for them it was not for Peggy and for Jarvis it was for the people that are still at their mansion specifically it's for Dr. Wilkes because because um Dottie told her about Dr. Wilkes being alive and being this ghost she mm-hmm. called him so um and she's like immaterial something something yeah so I Fro- have to go see this so Frost goes Frost goes to to the mansion, the, the mansion, mansion. yeah, and sees Wilkes, and they have this talk where she's trying to convince. I I couldn't tell quite, I because I only watched this through once, but she's pretty convincing for a while at least. That that why are you even working with these people? You know that one like the only reason why you were hired. It wasn't for your brilliant mind. It was because they knew you could, we could, that you could be paid cheap. Because you were desperate. So, and like, why do you want to work for all these people? Instead, you could, we could work together to do much more. She does the we're not so different, you and I. Yeah, we can make a more perfect world. And he says the world is pretty perfect as it is. And then she's like, really? And even at that moment, I'm like, yeah, well, because I mean, you're in the 1940s. You're a black guy in the 1940s. I think it's fair to say that the world is not okay the way it is for you and for, you know, just saying. Yeah, that's a little bit too optimistic, my friend. But at the same time, he's imagining her, like, taking over the world and can still see how, how the way things are is way better than her being, you know, ruling over with her magical zero-matter powers. He's got a preference, that's all. He's got a preference. So, I think, did he say no? I think he said no, right? Yeah, he said no. And I then, couldn't remember. And then, but, uh... 
and then she tries to use the absor like her absorbing powers on him and he just starts absorbing the dark matter. Or the yeah, so matter. she's like, "Whoa, that hasn't That's happened. New. That's new." Um okay. And, and then he has absorbed enough of that matter that when he leaves the cage that he is contained in, because I yeah. think that thing was supposed to take a long time for him to gain corporeal form, but, like, it was holding him in a corporeal form. Yeah, I didn't understand if Yeah, yeah, if they that didn't was... really explain it super well. Because... <laughs> Especially because then he was like, I'm really hungry. And I was like, okay, question, um, what are you going to do for a bathroom? You're in that tiny little cage. How is that going, how, well, how does that work? He hasn't ate in, like, you know, uh, two but months I'm just, or something. I'm, or, like, a few weeks. weeks. But I'm just saying... I'm just saying that, like, at some point... He has no ways to exact... to, to leave. Yet. Yet. But... But he's a, he just had a meal. I'm just saying, at some point, that was gonna happen. So, um... So, yeah, he gets kidnapped, and... Poor Anna. Anna did, did, didn't even know they were in the house until until they were already leaving for the car and she runs out and she tries to stop them by simply going no you can't do this and i'm like oh anna please at least bring out a weapon and she sees the car like the uh peggy's car and jarvis coming and so uh so um oh whitney and her now beau i guess uh the guy ken marino is playing the kind of gangster guy shoot her shoot anna right in like right in the torso too it's like it's a bad it's a bad place to get shot and she falls over and they run away because they know that peggy and jarvis will take anna to the hospital instead of going after them so one of the last things is them in the hospital jarvis just a mess because they don't know if she'll survive um which is super, yeah, it's super depressing. And Jarvis, a mess at the hospital is where we close the yeah. episode. Well, but also, it's... a little bit before that. Yeah, you wanted to talk about this. Right? Um. Oh, well, because I was going to say calls... uh, Dottie was in the trunk of Jarvis's car and escapes at the hospital. Oh, that too. But, uh, but besides that, um, Peggy calls Sosa, who had, um... He He'd calls, actually she tried. Calls the office. Oh yeah, she calls the office, and she's like, and... "Director, please." And who answers the phone? But Vernon Masters, who yeah. has taken control of the entire office over Sosa. Yeah. After his nice it's... encounter last night, which has left him a little bit battered and injured, but still able to come into the office. Oh yeah, office. because because some people clear because he was going to go over. He was going to go over to the Stark Mansion. And instead, he was beaten up by some thugs at his house. So he's not doing. He's not doing great. <laughs> Clearly, he's not doing yeah, great. Yeah, since the thugs were in mass, I'm going to probably safely assume assume that they were people in his department. Just told by Vernon Masters, if he leaves his house, beat him up. Maybe, but at the same time, I could almost see it being like anybody else. Any other goons? Hired goons. I wondered if maybe one of them was Thompson, because I thought we heard one of their voices. We did hear their voices. But I thought... I think it's going to be someone from the office. I don't think it, they're going to actually reveal it, because I think that's almost too little to reveal. But yeah. there, there's... It's weird that they were wearing masks. Because yeah. usually when you get hired goons on this show, they're not wearing masks. Yeah, but they might have also wanted to be like, oh, we're thieves. I don't know. So, hired um. Goons. Where do you I get hired know. goons? It's a comic book adaptation. They're gonna be hired goons. I'm not wrong. Oh, the other thing we learned was that, uh, Dottie has been completely rejected by. by the Soviet Union. Yeah, she's sort of. Like, ever since last season when. The she had gone off of without the a country. Yeah, so she is. So basically, she has no. Where? That's one of the. Yeah, that's the thing. She has no reason, like, or no 
focus, no reason. So whatever she was doing with that pin the first episode, it was clearly to find some of that focus. Um, but, uh, or I was thinking that she might have been using the pin to get back into good, into good graces with her own government. Maybe that, or maybe she was trying to actually get in on the society. Steal a pen. Maybe and it was one or the steal other. Steal a pen and then you know become the hired goon. Maybe, but uh, so yeah, that's all interesting. And I'm trying to think. If there's anything else from this episode? Really, I can't think of anything else. It was good. They were both really good. I'm just excited for like what's coming up next. I kind of get the feeling that Dottie kind of wants Peggy to offer her a job. I don't know if she could handle. I don't know if she could handle being a goody goody, which is I think not the so thing. much a goody goody, but like basically the uh, the independent hired goon, which Peggy wouldn't want her to be, so she Peggy keeps her close. You know what I mean? The unofficial Maybe. official capacity know. person. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not saying... I I doubt it, but I'm not saying you're necessarily going to be wrong. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because they're playing up a lot of stories here, and I think the whole c- epic conclusion is starting up she- S.H.I.E.L.D. and basically Peggy running it up with Soza and with uh, Stark and with Willis here as a science advisor and stuff like that. I think this that's where it ends. You mean Wilkes? Wilkes, yeah. I said Willis. I don't know why. Yeah. Pro- um Oh the one other thing I want to say and then I'm and then I'm good to go is one of the more delightful actually there were a couple delightful things about these two episodes. One that uh when in the first episode, because we didn't talk about this yet, there is this line about how how Jarvis wanted a gun when he went undercover and he went N-. she goes no you're not getting a gun uh, she can easily take it fr- like Dottie can easily take it from you or people will see you with the gun and he goes okay well what about a cane that actually has a sword inside and you know what the funny thing is about that I don't know if it was intentional or not but it I think it was a reference to the UK Avengers. To the other Avengers. The ones that aren't the Marvel one, but the one that's like the British one where it's about a spy who has a British accent and has a and has a cane that has like a that has a knife in it. So I was really I don't know if they meant to do that, but I thought it was really funny that Jarvis, you know, the guy who inspired Vision, wanted to be in the other Avengers. I thought that was funny. Uh, but no, the other funny thing with Jarvis was the scene where they're going to the trap, and in the second episode, and this is after she's kissed uh, Dr. Wilkes, but he starts talking to her about her love life because he's like, so I, I noticed you kissed Dr. Wilkes back there. And I also noticed that uh, the other night, you and Mr. S- or Agent Souza had a conversation. And she's like, were you listening to me? No! I just happened to, over you know, here. over here. It's not my fault. Uh, and it ha- and he starts going over like, you know, you have Dr. Wilkes who's fu- who's easygoing and kind and has those that gentle smile, but then you have Soza who's strong and brave and has those soft eyes. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Jarvis describing Peggy Suiters would be my favorite TV show ever. Just like a whole show. Just about, just about him describing this, because it was delightful. It made that whole scene was just, um, it just sums up so much that's so good about that dynamic. I love their friendship so much, but just the fact that he was kind of getting involved in her going like, you know, you are kind of leading them on just a little bit. And she's like, I'm not, no, I'm not trying, no, I'm not, no. It was good. I liked it a lot. Jarvis is great. Do you have any other... Jarvis is great. I'm so glad we got a second season of this. Um, Do you have anything else that you wanted to bring up? Uh, Anything before episode? Um, I forgot to mention it when when they captured uh, Dottie, but they use a net cannon. 
Yeah, that was fun. And then she's like, they really? Just mess up a guy's hair. Well, and because also like the net, the net in question is so weak looking. It's like it's such a it's such a comic relief, like doop doop, and then it ends up actually electrocuting her. So that was fun. Oh, that cannon. So I think with that, I, I'm ready to go. Yeah, me too. All right, so we'll see you next week for the next two episodes. Bye, everybody. Bye. Hey, everyone, it's Katie and Mike. Say hi, Mike. Hi, everybody. Uh, we are back for Agent Carter Reviews for Season 2. Uh, you, as you probably know if you watched the show in the last week or so, uh, that it has indeed been going to double episodes now, and I believe they're going to do that for the rest of the season. So our general idea is to just do them by the night that we that they were both on. So instead of doing... This- one episode will cover two episodes of Agent Carter. Exactly. Um, we're actually, if you didn't know, we were a little bit behind, but we're trying to catch up. Yeah, I'm uh, so we I'm sorry. Good. And um, then we just, it took us so long to get this up, and we were already a little behind on the last, on the week before it. So for this one, we both only watched the episodes in the last few days. But we're here to talk about them because, wow, things are really picking up on this show. Yes, things have greatly. Um, greatly. Even though it does feel very much like they're still trying to, um, what's the word? Like they're still doing little, this is the crazy thing that's happening this week sort of thing. And in this one, you know, last time it was like a, it was basically a heist. This time it's like a spy thing. Which is a slightly different flavor of, like, adventure. But, uh, as you recall... So, we have the two episodes. We should get to that first. We have two episodes uh, to go over. Uh, what were they called again, hon? Um, the... Ooh, I forget what the first one is called, but the second one, I believe, is Monsters. Oh, you know what? It's Life of the Party is the first one, and Monsters is the second. So, so life, yep, of the party life of the party is this, they come up with this plan where they have to get a little bit of Whitney Frost's blood because her, or at least anti-matter, it's zero matter, zero matter. They have to get that zero um, matter. in order to help Dr. Wilkes, who is just barely hanging on to, um, to being part of, like, I forget how they're saying, but basically he keeps phasing in and out of existence, which is, you know, not a good thing. So they have to gather some of this zero matter from, uh, from Whitney Frost, but there are some problems. Uh, one that pe- both Peggy and um, and Souza are well known to Whitney Frost, so she would see them coming a mile away. But also the fact that the episode just before Peggy had got- had been found out by um, by Red from. That '70s show, and uh, and so and then she gets captured. I'm trying to think. If there's anything in between there. Um, there's a really good scene because they see Thompson. Yeah, they they see Thompson's Thompson there, the... and immediately Dottie's like, "Can I kill him? I'm allowed to kill him, right? Like he's clearly he's clearly back. We can kill him now, right? Because I really want to kill him." And like a you know a touching parent, Peggy has to say over the mic, no, you don't, You are not going to kill him. You don't get to kill anybody. No, stop it. Uh, but no, there's that great scene with Jarvis and, and Thompson that I, that I thought was handled really well, didn't you? Yes, because Jarvis gets to be a little bit, um... Just a little yeah, bit and of he a does. It, it's fun because, in, he does it without without actually giving away anything. Like he doesn't say anything incriminating. You know, Thompson's very suspicious already. He's like, it's clear you clearly were sent here by Carter. She's clearly has her hands in something. What are you doing? And then uh, Jarvis essentially says, "No, but I would say this to you that you need to be careful." Because you were getting wrapped up in, and like the way he, I forget what he says exactly, but he but he has some really strong 
accurate words to say to Thompson about how how uh, his behavior and being kind of cowardice because he's and he's uh, surrounded by snakes. But um, yeah, I thought that that was done really well. It's interesting where they're going with Thompson because I think they could easily have him. He has enough deniability at this point um, that as long as once it once he knows for sure that something bad's going down, he actually chooses to do the right thing. They might end up going that way, where he decide. You know, he's very suspicious at this point. And it's pretty clear that he he's not completely in the dark about what's going on, but there's still enough deniability on his part. You know what I mean? Like he's yeah, still I can he's that. just at the point where if anything else happens he's he thought that the guy was going to be a senator and he was going to be working with the senator and you know he, he has dreams yeah, of and... grandeur sort of like and he's thinking it in a you know helping yeah the exactly. country well yeah way, rather than helping this shady go you know, I don't think his. I mean, I don't think his his intentions industry. are nearly that pure, even to himself. I think he's thinking of it as as playing the game, but I don't think he's thinking of it as as um, he's an accessory to something extremely illegal and and mutinous. You know, which yeah, yeah but it's not to the point where like I don't think he knows anything about about what Whitney Frost is doing when he gets to that point I think it's going to be one of those things where he has to s decide whether he's in too deep and he has to keep going or he's going to do the right thing I'm I don't know either way I feel like I feel like honestly they could set him up for a, a good fall that would because I feel like if they make him a good guy after all it's almost the weaker, the weaker ending, you know, for him to be, the, for him to be like fairly yeah. sleazy even now, but then decide to go back and like, and be okay, even though he, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, um, I've been saying from the beginning of this one that I think they're setting him up for a fall, even though I totally thought that he was going to get betrayed and like, completely like you know just like oh you thought that had meaning well no not really not at all I was just using you I really thought that's how they were going to play him and then he would end up with nothing but um I'm kind of thinking he's just going to sort of get squirreled like he's he's going to end up seeing that he's not yeah I'm kind of I'm know. kind of in between because at the well we'll get to the second episode coming up but with the first, this first episode, I still feel like he's still in that middle ground where he could easily... Well, wait, maybe it was the second... Maybe it was the first episode where he goes to Peggy. Do you remember? It's hard for me to, um... to remember because it, it was... Like, I watched the episodes, you know, back to back, like a lot of people did. But, um... Oh, whatever. So, yeah, I'm interested in what, Tom, in what they're doing with Thompson. Um, besides that, I'm trying to think what else happened specifically in the first episode. I mean, Jarvis was great. He, I like him stepping up to the bat impaled and barely, and barely survived dying. And we talked about it at length, just how ridiculous that wound is. But I at least appreciate the fact that she's not going back on a mission right after, even if there's still, like, no way in which, like, in which she would be able to move around, period. This is very much, this is very much... Yeah, she's on desks. This exactly, is about as but it's also, like, a very comic book wound. Because, again, like, not only did she, did she get impaled and just, that just happened to miss all of her organs, but she also, like, smacked her head really bad. To the point where I still say that she probably would have had major, like a major head wound in any other show, and instead she's walking around. 
So, um, but in any case, they're at least acknowledging, no, 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 she'd be injured. She can't, she can't do it. So they decide, well, who can, we can't, Rose is out of the, is out of town conveniently. And we can't, conveniently, and we can't trust anyone in the office because we don't know who's, who's, uh, working for the bad guys because already some of their higher ups are being really shady. Uh... So, and we don't want to put any civilians in the field, even though they still put Jarvis in, because apparently Jarvis is just, like, he has enough do, he has enough field experience at this point. So they decide the only person that could possibly get the job done, that Whitney Frost doesn't know, that they can definitely trust to not be working for the government, or for, you know, like, the shady part of the government, is uh, Dottie, who is in jail right now. Or at least not jail, but, like, secret secret prison I don't know what what you would call it Prime book prison where it's all where Comic it's book prison. actually a facility that's underneath an, a closed clothing store of all places so they break her out and it's every time Dottie and Peggy get to have interaction is really fun so all like everything with them was a real treat would you agree Yes, because they have really great conversations. It's with hard each other. not to think just... that Dottie has some really messed up but genuine feelings for Peggy. Like there's there's clearly something like she's she yeah. feels very strongly about Peggy Carter. So when Peggy Carter comes in, her face just lights up. She's just so excited. <laughs> Maybe it's because she does see Peggy as this challenge. That is true, and, and I think that I think also Dottie is so messed up <sighs> that that it do, it makes sense for her to have affection come out in like through this very ad- adversarial relationship, um, where she would probably murder Peggy whenever you know what I mean. Um, it's, it's similar, I don't want to make this distinction, but it does come to mind that it is similar to, like, how the Joker genuinely likes Batman, even though he's always trying to murder him. Like, there's some part of him that is just really glad that Batman exists for him to, to tangle with, you know? Uh, but yeah, so they break her out, Mm -hmm. and they put a, a diamond necklace on her that is booby-trapped, so that if she tries to take it off or tries anything shady, they could always flip the switch and it would kill her. Um, so they have the, a very fast acting poison. A very fast acting poison. And, um, so, uh, they also have a tracking device on her and they send her in with Jarvis. Uh, the whole episode is really entertaining. There's a lot, there's a lot going on. And considering that Peggy doesn't get to do a lot of it, the fact that they still kept it really engaging is fun. Uh, and yes. there's, uh, and Peggy gets to have yeah nice that happened. Um, so, so apparently the the fiance is just gone. Like they broke it off. Um, and I do like the fact that immediately Peggy goes into friend mode, and it's like how no that you are who does she think she is that she could say no to you? You are a perfect candidate for husband. I don't think she says like that. But she's very much like, I'll talk to her and explain to her how great you are. And he's like, no, that would be the worst idea ever. <laughs> and there's a whole, like, there's a whole gag where she she asks why and he finally says, because she thinks that I'm in love with you. And Jarvis, who has his earpiece in, hears all of it. And his responses are, like, his physical and facial responses are amazing. <laughs> It's it's the perfect, like, what do I do? Oh my god, I'm hearing this, and I can't respond, because if I respond, then they'll know, they'll hear me, but I don't know what to do. Uh, and then everything goes to hell after that, because at that point, um, Dottie...